G'day, it's Dave from Canine Classroom and what we're doing today is preparing all of our raw food for our dogs and what we wanted to do was show you guys how we go through the process. We explain this to a lot of our clients when they uh, join up as members and come along and start training their dogs with us in our group classes, when we go out and do private lessons with people because diet plays such a major role in the overall uh, temperament of the dog. If you get the right diet and the right balance and proportions, you'll have a dog that's full of vitality, great energy, uh, in really good healthy condition, as opposed to dogs that are fed um, a highly processed and really poorly put together dry kibble, which is what most dogs eat in the community these days. Um, we very much advocate a raw diet. We do supplement raw food with dry kibble, but there's a particular brand of dry kibble that we uh, recommend and refer our clients to and we actually sell to our members um, if needed but it should only make up a very small proportion of the dog's diet. If you follow an 80-20 rule like we should do as humans, 80% of the time they're getting the appropriate raw food that's suitable for a canine and then 20% of the time you're just supplementing that food with the dry kibble just purely out of convenience and to give them a little bit of variety into their diet. So how do we do it? Well, we're gonna start off with um, raw mince um, that in this particular case is chicken and it's come from chicken frames. We've also added some chicken livers to give it some offal. So it's very important that you get a very good balance of bone, protein, flesh, skin, muscle, um, joint cartilage, fat, and offal as a combination. So it's gonna make up the core ingredient. Around about 70 to 75% of the total volume of the meal is gonna be made up of that. Um, that's what gives it its name, BARF, biologically appropriate raw food. And in this context, we're feeding a carnivore, okay? So a canine is a carnivore. A canine is not an omnivore, as some people refer, or a herbivore. Yes, they can eat her, um, plant matter and vegetable matter and whatnot, and we're gonna show you that in a moment, but they don't just go around grazing on plants and grass and nuts and grains and beet, berries and seeds. They get that from the, um, the prey that they chase and that they kill and that they uh, eat. So they'll rip open the stomach of the prey and inside the stomach they've got vegetable matter that's rotting, decaying, fermenting, being digested by that particular prey animal that they've just killed. Uh, if you come in over here, we're gonna have a bit of a look at some of those types of bits and pieces. So we've got some watermelon here, we've got beetroot, uh, we've got apples, we've got beans, uh, we've got celery, we've got some sugarloaf cabbage, we've got garlic. Now garlic, there's half a clove here going into this overall mixture, which is gonna make up around about 40 to 50 kilos of uh, food matter. Um, you want the garlic to be in a low dose because in high doses it can be toxic for, for a dog, but in low doses it can be very good for them, just like with us. Um, it's a prebiotic, so it helps to digest food, and obviously it's great for immunity, helps to um, keep ticks and fleas away and all the like. Uh, we've also got some collard greens, leafy greens underneath that's going to go into the mix. Over here, we have this bag of Vets All Natural. Dr. Bruce Simon. Now this is a product that's been around probably close to 20 years now and yet a lot of people still don't know what it actually is. And if you come in a bit closer again, you can see that it's called the complete mix. Now we just mix in fresh meat. We're adding some vegetable matter as well because I like to um, get the vegetables into the dog too. Um, healthy skin and shiny coat, improve health and well-being, manage weight control, Bones and joints support strong immune system, longer life. The way that that's achieved is through the ingredients that we have here. So lettuce, yeast, garlic, kelp, vitamin C, flaxoid, flaxseed, um, parsley and barley grass. Uh, added in with some oats and um, other um, grains that are relevant to a dog. And when we mix this stuff up, It literally just starts like a porridge, a dry porridge, but then we, in here, we've added in the water, and now it's become like a wet mix, a bit like a birch and muesli. So we added the water to this mix yesterday, and it's been soaking for close to 24 hours now, and what that's done is that's um, started to uh, set off, if you like, all of the different components that are in here, and activate all of the goodness and the enzymes, so that 
um, pre-fermenting process has already taken place. Over here, in this particular tub, what we've got is we've got the vegetable mix which we've pureed. Um, just in a Ninja, a Nutribullet, one of those sorts of blenders. All of the pulp, everything, all of the fiber is really good for the dogs. The reason that we blitz it like this is because if the dog was just to consume some beetroot or a carrot or some apple or watermelon, um, the dog doesn't have the enzymes to be able to break them down appropriately. So we do the work for the dog. We split open the cell lining, split open the cell wall, and then we mix it in through this and put it in through the food. And now the dog gets the opportunity to absorb more of the nutrients that are contained within the vegetables. Otherwise your dog will eat it, he will process it, but most of it will just be pooped out the other side. So what we're gonna do now is just mix this through here. The aroma coming out of this is unbelievable. It's a pity that you can't smell what you can see. But the fresh fruit and veg combined with the garlic, combined with the fets all natural, it just smells fresh, it just smells real. It's being made here and now. It's not something that's pre-processed, pre-manufactured. We know exactly what's going into the dog's food, into their meal. So we've got confidence that our dogs are being fed what mother nature intended for them. I'm just giving that a real nice mix through it. Get all those vegetables mixed in through there. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're just going to transfer that mix in here with the meat. A messy process this but it's a bit fun to get down and dirty and make your dog's food. Now a lot of vets and a lot of um, different people in the industry try to put people off man making their own food. They say that it's time consuming, they say it takes a lot of hard work. That's just not true. Um, my butcher does all this work for me. Um, he gets the chicken frames in, um, the offal and there's whole legs in there as well which I forgot to mention before and he just puts it all through his mincer for me, puts it in these buckets. This was freshly made today about two hours ago. And um, now we've added in all of these components and these ingredients. And the whole, pro like we're making a large batch here as you can see, but the whole process takes a couple of hours. You could do it on a Sunday afternoon. And when we transfer it across into our Chinese food type takeaway containers and then store them away in the fridge, in the freezer, um, to, to freeze and lock in all that goodness, it's sitting in there waiting for you just to pull out, let it thaw down, feed it to your dog, feed it to him frozen. Give him something to chew on and gnaw on, occupy his time when you're not around. Um, but it's just a great meal and it's just a great way to, um, again, you, being a dog owner, I feel great that this is the food that I'm feeding to my own personal dogs and the staff feel the same way as well. So what I'm going to start doing here is mixing this all through the chicken mince. Um, it's just now, just like if you've ever made hamburgers at home, just that same kind of process. We're just going to work it all through and we'll cut filming now and we'll resume filming shortly, which will be part two of the video and you'll see the, um, the mix all made up together.